is truly a great pleasure to welcome Chiranjeev Kathuria. He is a very accomplished individual, a serial entrepreneur, and now chairman and CEO of a great company, Planet Space. Chiranjeev, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Company is making a lot of news. Twenty million dollars of flight. Let's talk about it. You know, I think 10 years ago, um, I was the founding director of a company called Mircorp. And Mircorp um, sent the first privately funded, you know, commercial manned mission to space. And Dennis Tito was our first commercial passenger. And uh, like you said, you know, he paid $20 million for that privilege. And I think that helped start you know, it was the beginnings of the commercial um, space industry. And Planet Space, you know, does several different things. One is, you know, we've teamed up with Lockheed Martin, ATK, and Boeing for this bid called, um, it's called commercial cargo delivery to the uh, space station. And we're in ongoing discussions with NASA to see, you know, what will happen if we'll be, you know, awarded um, a cargo bid. We've also bid for the uh, commercial crew bid, and we would hear about that shortly. And, you know, we're also involved, similar to Virgin Galactic, you know, in the space tourism business, there's a vehicle called the FDL-7 Flight Dynamics Laboratory. Excuse me that was developed by the U.S. Air Force. And that vehicle is really good for point-to-point -point travel. For example, it can go from here to India in, um, you know, 40 minutes. That's what the vehicle was, you know, designed for. So we're developing a commercial version of that. So we're having a lot of fun, and it's, uh, it's been a childhood passion. But it is not an easy industry to be in. It's still years ahead. So you think uh, we are guesstimating 10 years, 15 years? No, I think that's a good question. You know, when you're trying to raise private financing for industries like that, I remember we talked to one private equity group and he said, I don't know what you're smoking, but I wish I had some of that. So I, I think it's, it's a growing industry. I think on the orbital side, delivery of cargo and crew, that cargo will definitely happen in the next 24 to 36 months. In fact, NASA is already making cargo awards. The Presidential Commission released their findings um, to the President yesterday, and they basically said that they should allocate several billion dollars for public-private partnerships. So I think you'll see cargo and crew delivery commercially, you know, probably with cargo within two to three years, and I think crew within, I would say, three to seven years. That's, that, like you said, it's very difficult. I think on the space tourism side, or point to point, everyone always says it's going to happen next year, but I think a realistic estimate, again, we know from what we're doing and, you know, what Virgin Galactic is doing, I think, you know, somewhere between two to five years at the earliest, you know, and somewhere the mean would probably be in the middle. So the industry is definitely evolving and happening. You know, people who look up to you and listen to you, uh, there must be in awe, I'm in awe, but how do you get to be where you are? Uh, a, you have to have the right kind of passion. I mean, everybody dreams of these things, but it's, practically it's impossible to, to be an entrepreneur in this space. And I just want to understand, before I take you back to your other entrepreneurial ventures, and this is a probably childhood dream come true for you, but uh, now that you're an adult and an entrepreneur, uh, for others who are listening, uh, how do you think you made this journey all the way to here? See, I think one thing is what I tell people is always have passion. Do what you like. You know, you know, it doesn't have to be a space company. It doesn't have to be a fashion design company or a software company. Do something you really like and kind of stick with it because that's you'll always do well. I think... You know, as Thomas Edison said, people didn't know how close to success they were when they quit. You know, being an entrepreneur is like a sine curve. You're going to go to ups and downs. You just got to keep going through the next trolley. You know, never give up. And I think then surround yourself with good people and companies. I think that's, you know, really important with, you know, Planet Space. We're working with some of the major aerospace companies. 
what I always tell people, 100% of zero is still zero. So if you have some really good people, share the equity and have partnerships with them. The companies that we've did, you know, done really well is, is where we've owned, you know, not the majority stake, but, you know, a, a significant stake. Those have always, you know, done well. And I think, you know, never give up. That's the, that, that's the key. You're, gonna, you're always going to have failures. And it's like someone said, an entrepreneur is someone who falls on their butt 10 times and then makes a billion. To get uh, a perspective of your journey to, to where you are, uh, let's, if I may ask you to summarize, you know, other entrepreneur ventures before you start a plant space. So, you know, my background is I went to um, undergraduate and medical school out of Brown, um, did an MBA out at Stanford, and my, you know, first job was opening up the first U.S. investment bank in India, Morgan Stanley. I mean, I saw the beginnings of, you know, India. I was, you know, one of the former, um, you know, directors of Airtel when it was just getting started, when there was a license to a piece of paper to see it. Now, as, you know, one of the world's largest cellular phone companies, I worked on the GDRs for Reliance and Taj Hotel. So I remember going to India when there was hardly any street lights. to by the time I left, you would see ads for Nike shoes that says promises to last longer than your girlfriend. So you saw the whole transformation. After that, um, you know, we um, invested in a company called the um, Extreme Networks, you know, $55,000. It was sold in a cash and stock deal to Liberty Surf for $75 million, and the combined company went public for $2.9 billion. It was the first, you know, free ISP before Net Zero and Juno, and it became one of the larger ISPs in Europe. Um, you know, other things we were involved in was we always tried to be a little bit ahead of the curve. Um, many years ago, when you, or not many years ago, probably three or four years ago, when you came to a hospital and you were in an accident or you had a trauma, they, they would do an MRI or CT later, but they would never use it for diagnostic services because there was a shortage of radiologists. By the time you called the radiologist in, you know, it, the diagnosis, you know, you know, wouldn't be valuable to immediately treat the patient. So we started sending the images um, to, radiology, to radiologists by the Internet, and, and we were able to send them back in 15 minutes. And today, today, um, what happened with that company? That company merged with another company that was doing a similar thing. We we became the third largest in the U.S. We merged with another company that was the largest. That combined company went public on Nasdaq Nighthawk Radiology, but that has changed the standard of care. You know. The, the combined companies in probably close to 3,000 hospitals. Now when you go into an ER, they'll use an MRI or CT, send it to a radiologist, and in 15 minutes you'll get a diagnosis. So it, it helps treat stuff. Um, you know, there's been a lot of other, you know, ventures. Um, we're building, we just announced um, a couple of weeks ago with Wanshang, China's second largest non-state-owned company. We're building the largest solar farm you know, in the United States. So it's been a lot of fun. It's been, there's been ups and downs, but it's definitely been a lot of fun. You know, you have been involved in so many things and you're still so active with your ventures. Uh, you are a young man still, although you look much wiser because of all the accomplishments, I guess. Uh, that's too but, kind. Uh, I know you are the most, or amongst the most eligible bachelors in town, and you're from Chicago. I'm just trying to see who would be the right girl for you. So that's a good question. When I was running for the U.S. Senate race, um, you know, politically I love politics. I ran in the U.S. Senate race when the president was running in that same race. And when the cameras came to interview my parents, you know, my dad said, it's great, you can come to this country and his son can run for the second highest elected office. And they asked my mom, what did she think? And she said, I'm just worried he's not going to have enough time to get married. And, you know, that's what all the... Uh, cameras picked up on. But no, so if I look at my time, I think I spend a third of my time on my old companies, a third of my time on new companies, and a third of my time looking for, uh, looking for a wife. Sharanjeev, thank you. It's truly a pleasure. It's, it's really great meeting you. Thanks. <laughs>